Hello fellow humans! So good to see you again! Look where we are, we're on the road because we are going to London Town! The land of eels, jelly deals. What else? I won't be eating jelly deals, I'll tell you that, but I'm partial to a pie. I love the Cockneys. Pie, yeah, Cockneys. Big Ben in there, Buckingham Palace. King Charles. King, yeah. Wrote that, that play up piano when they sing Needs Up Mother Brown. Has that got a, <laughs> that's got a name, has it? Is it not like some sort of music? I'm hoping that I get to sing around a piano at some point during my visit. <laughs> Staying in a Premier Inn uh, hotel, very central London, very close to Covent Garden. We are going to see the play Pillow Man tonight at the Duke York Theatre. And we're also going out for a Ruby Murray curry to an Indian restaurant for a curry. We're going to a few bars. We're going to see a show while we're here. And then tomorrow we're heading over to Silverstone to go and see the Formula One racing. So join us. Nice to have you along. We arrived at our Premier Inn at 1pm, check-in wasn't till 3pm, so we could drop our bags off here. As you can see, this is located between Leicester Square and Covent Garden, a really good location. This is the view from outside our Premier Inn, and then we headed off to explore. This is a show that we had come to see, The Pillow Man. This was the cast of the show. I had actually come to see Steve Pemberton as I am a very big fan. Lily Allen was also appearing in this play. This Premier Inn would be a good base for any shopping you wanted to do. There was a really good vibe in Covent Garden. Lots of individual shops as well as your main brands. So some lovely antique shops, lots of bars and restaurants. I would highly recommend it. There's so much to look at in London. Yes, it's quite busy and there are a lot of tourists, but it is very quirky as well. There's some great quirky shops. Everyone was really friendly that we came into contact with. Loved the adventure of it all. This is this print of that little girl swimming with the mouse as well. I love that. So next we went over to the Maharaja for our curry. I had a vegetable bowl tea and a garlic naan. Paul had a chef special chicken with a naan all sort. The food was very good. The feel of it was more like a cafe than a restaurant, but the food was fantastic. Then we went into Salisbury Pub. We had a couple of drinks in here. I had a Camden Hills lager and Paul had one of the real ales. There were, I think, four or five real ales on the pump and uh, a few different lagers to choose from. We are in room 208 and check this out. I've just been in, we've put our bags underneath, but I'm showing you guys how cute is this? This is the room. I honestly think it's the cutest thing. You can't actually get out this door. So there is no window. However, there are two windows out here and then this is your room. So it's just a bed. You've got storage underneath. You've got a little bit of storage here. Handsome uh, oh. husband as well. Comes with the room. Storage facilities for your clothes, but only a small amount. We've got some hooks here, a bottle opener. It's got a full length mirror there got a big mirror in here really well lit and then a shower what more could you want in the centre of London very close to Covent Garden you say you've no window you've got supply ventilation extra ventilation oh my gosh so you've got pressure coming in there you've got a little drawer and, and we've got a drawer here that Paul throw your, Paul knows all the facts throw your wines in there just get the <laughs> and when you get a free bottle of water and oh, oh and a little oh, desk gone. look hey oh, see look at this we have got all the features and they do free tea and coffee don't they downstairs yes 
So you can go down, even though there's no tea and coffee in the rooms, you can go down, get a free tea or coffee anytime you want in the main reception. Look at that. Loving it. Fantastic. We're just about set off. What we did when we got here, we actually had a mute round. We found this beautiful antique shop. We ended up talking to this cockney chap. Oh, he was great, Bob. And he was telling us all about his antiques. He was showing us around. Oh, it was great. We spent ages in there chatting to him. And he was so knowledgeable, he was great. And then we headed over for a curry to the Maharaja. Then we headed over to a bar. We're proper British folk and ordered a pint and a half. We just checked in. Now you couldn't check in until 3 p.m. Uh, and they were very strict on that but they would look after your luggage for Not you. Not even 10 to 3. Not even 10 to 3, no. They were making people wait. They must have a very strict policy. Shown on the map exactly where it is. Oh, Paul's just turned a light on. Look at that lighting, much better. Oh no, turn that up. Turn that up. Yeah, settings. there we go. There's four different Brightest for me, thank you. Well, now we're heading over to the theatre and we're actually going in the Embassy Lounge. So I'll so show you that first before we go into the show. So we're going Embassy Lounge and then into the show. I cannot wait, guys. So excited. I'm very happy lady. I'm not happy yet, not seeing him yet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's it. Yeah, that's it. Properly soon. Yes. See you, pal. Thank you so much for coming. Yeah. There you go. Over there. Oh no! <laughs> one day, one day, oh, one day. Okay. Yeah. There you go. Come with Lee, Mike. Come on, you. I was so chuffed that Steve actually spoke to us. We'd waited uh, about an hour to see him. He had guests, so he didn't come out till a lot later than the other cast, but it was well worth the wait. Then we saw Leicester Square Station. Now, I was excited about seeing anything that's on a Monopoly board. Then we went in the casino. They had a bar in there and a restaurant, and they had this amazing wall with all these artifacts on photos and information about when they performed at the Hippodrome, which is the theatre inside this casino. There was Julie Andrews there, a picture of her when she was a child, the Dixieland Band, and like I say, there were photos and the actual pieces and props and pieces of the set and costumes. So there was Houdini on there, Harry Houdini, uh, Swan Lake, and they had the ballet pumps. They had a lion tamer next to that. They had Charlie Chaplin, Kane and Hat. I don't know if these are all, they must be original artifacts, but they were available to touch. You would think they'd be behind glass. So I'm not sure whether they were originals or not. I was quite impressed. After about half an hour in the casino, we headed back to the hotel and got a good night's sleep. Then on to the next day. So the next day we did a tour of London on the big bus. We wanted to do something very touristy while we were here. We wanted to see the sights and this seemed like a really good idea. It is a open top bus tour with commentary. So you get to find out lots of facts about London while seeing all the sites. And this is a map of the routes that you can take on your bus. You can pay for different routes, 
We can have the blue root, the green root, or the red root. We picked the red root with the bought tour included. There were many different tour companies going from this same bus stop, so you must look out for the one you have booked. We used the big bus tour as we'd heard very good reviews online about it. It only took 10 minutes for a bus to arrive. You could get on at any of the stations. You just showed them your ticket. And they also had staff members at the bus stops. You could pay for it on the day or you could pre-book it and show them your pre-booking and they would give you a ticket. And you could hop on and off as many times as you wanted at any of the stations. You got these little headphones. This was the commentary, so you just plugged it in. They had it in other languages. It was a beautiful sunny day when we were in London, actually about 28 degrees, so it was lovely. We're in the area now where Nelson's Column is. As well as having the commentary, they'd also play songs, British songs, and that changed. Uh, they were like related to that area or they were related to something they were talking about on the commentary. Here we're going through the West End again with all the theatres, we've got Westminster Station. That one's not on the Monopoly board, is it? Here we are on Parliament Street, and then we see the Bodicea, Queen Bodicea statue. Queen Bodicea with her two daughters on her war chariot, crossing one of London's many bridges now over the River Thames. And in the background there, you can see the Millennium Wheel, which is almost like the Orlando Eye, isn't it? They have them all over the world, don't they? They have a Dubai one as well. And to the right, there's Big Ben and the Houses of Parliament. What I did learn from the commentary as well, which I found very surprising, was that the Millennium Wheel was supposed to be a temporary attraction but it ended up staying because on a good day, it can bring in a quarter of a million pounds. Wow. <laughs> can you imagine that? I can't believe it makes that much. I mean, how much is it to go on? I'd be interested to know. I should look that up. And here is St. Paul's Cathedral, famous St. Paul's Cathedral, which apparently was part of a major rebuilding program in the city after the Great Fire of London. It was absolutely stunning. I can understand why people would want to visit this landmark. We were travelling around London. I kept seeing these Morph statues also, all decorated. Morph is a character from when I was growing up. Um, there used to be a programme on telly called Take Heart, and it was an art programme, and Morph was one of the plasticine characters from that programme. I kept seeing him all over London. Just passing the Shard here. So the Shard is an amazing building. It actually was supposed to look unfinished at the top and the architect who built the Shard apparently did not want paying the one million fee. Uh, he said he would have a penthouse at the top of the building instead and a few years later apparently he sold that apartment for four million. Very savvy businessman. All the boats going up and down the River Thames on this beautiful sunny day and we've got Tower Bridge and here we are crossing this beautiful ornate Tower Bridge. And here we have the historic Tower of London. Uh, which is where the crown jewels are kept. Most of these areas now that we're passing are open to the public as well. You can get tickets um, on the day or you can pre-book tickets before you your trip to London. So if there's anywhere you think, oh, I'd like to know a little bit more about that, there are tourist attractions. So you can go and have a look and find out a little bit more. At this point, we hopped off the bus and hopped onto the boat tour. On the bus tour, it talked about the Great Fire of London, the plague, we saw the Tower Bridge went over Tower Bridge, we saw the uh, London Bridge also. The weather is absolutely phenomenal, blue skies, really enjoyed it so far. With our ticket on the, with the big bus, we did some research before we came. The big bus tour seemed to be one of the better ones. It seemed to be really good, it was quite entertaining. They played a little bit of music as well, some British music as you were 
you were going round. And you can hop off that bus on and off all day. The tickets were around £40 per person. You jump on a boat as well. So you can hop on this boat, it'll take us back over to Westminster. Tower of London, going around to these really oldy worldy, this oldy worldy building. It's in two, it's a really contemporary building. Outside we have pubs where you can sit and eat and drink. I presume at night and it'll all be lit up. How pretty would that be? meant to resemble a broken shard of glass at the top and that's what gives it its uh, unfinished look. It's got 95 floors, fully furnished with offices, apartments, restaurants, gyms, a five star Shangri-La hotel, a white building with a wooden frame and a factory. That's a replica of William Shakespeare's New Globe Theatre. You lovely folks can go inside of there today and have a live performance for a meagre price of only five pounds. Five pounds for a live performance anywhere in London is an absolute bargain price. The bridge, you may recall when this bridge was snapped into two, all using a bit of magic and some special effects. Any single ladies on the boat today, I'm very sorry, taken already. It's a little bit too late. But my colleague downstairs is more than willing to give anyone a kiss if they wish. <laughs> now as we pass through leaving the city of London behind us and we'll soon be entering the city of Westminster. Now the city of London is one of the smallest cities in the entire world and it is only one square mile and that is sometimes what London is known as the square mile and that is Father Thames at the top of the archway also to our right you've got the Wellington this large white ship is an old New Zealand naval sloop now this was gifted to us by the New Zealand Navy and it is now a permanent fixture here on the River Thames as a master mariner's club. To be a member of the club, you'll have to be a captain at sea for up to 20 years. So basically, it is a drinking club for retired sea captains. We have an Egyptian stone obelisk, and this is called Cleopatra's Needle. It is over three and a half thousand years old. And that makes it older than the city of London itself. Now it was given to us by a very thankful Egyptian viceroy to commemorate Lord Nelson's victory over Napoleon during the Battle of the Nile. It is one of a pair and the sister to this can be found in Central Park, New York City. It Paul is needs to go take me to the other the sister the monument in Central Park. This will be one of the first and second world war. The beak of that eagle is actually pointing to the beaches of Normandy in northern France, where we suffered our heaviest losses. The iconic clock tower, commonly mistaken for being Big Ben. That is not Big Ben. That is called the Elizabeth Clock Tower. Big Ben is the name for the 13 and a half ton bell that lives inside the tower. So just think folks, you can never really see Big Ben, you can only truly hear Big Ben. Once the boat arrived in Westminster, it docked and we all got off. So it's just that one route on the boat there and you can get on it on the way back. I presume that the facts are all the same. Obviously you say not seeing all the same things on the way back. We hopped back on the bus, but by this point guys, I was getting very, very hungry. So we only stayed on the bus another 10 minutes. Then we jumped off very close to Buckingham Palace and we had a look for somewhere to eat.
very close to Buckingham Palace and Regent Park at this point. We actually get, got to see the Queen's Guards marching up and down. From Buckingham Palace we had a walk through Regent's Park and then we had a little quick look around the shops. We went to a little cafe and got a toasty and some pasta and some magic here with the sculpture of Harry Potter. We had such a great time in London. The historical feel of it, there is so much to do. Yes, it is quite an expensive city, but well worth a visit. Back to the car and headed over to Silverstone where we were staying in an Airbnb. And as you can see, this is our first full day of Silverstone. Here we go, guys, get your petrol heads on. Good morning, guys. So we are heading over now to Silverstone to the Formula One. There's a lot of people here. I think it holds 300,000. So it's 8 a.m. We get some breakfast as well when we get there. There's food available all day. I think it's food trucks. Paul is very excited as well. So excited. <laughs> as you can see. We had about a half an hour walk from where the taxi dropped us off. The queue, we're here at 8.30, so 30 minutes after it opens. 30 minutes after it opened um, and we queued for about 10 minutes, hardly any time at all. Now we're heading over to the racing green where we're going to be. to the racing green we saw these classic cars and these are cars from Grand Prix from years gone by cars from the 1950s all the way up to race cars from the noughties and these actually did do a procession around the track later on in the day some of the cars were having repair works so we've got a lovely Benton 1992 car there. We've got a McLaren also from 1992. My era this, 1993. And it went all the way up, I think, to 2002. These are your naughty's cars here, right at the end. Yeah, and that last one there from 2002. At the event, there were many different areas that you could buy tickets for. We passed this on the way to our area. This was the Ignition Club. It also had hospitality. Ours was the Racing Green. So we were in the Racing Green area with the hospitality. And up on the board there, you can see that it's the Saturday. So it was the qualifying races today for the main event, which was on the Sunday. After entering the racing green area, on the right they had a virtual driving experience which Paul and John had a turn at on the Sunday morning. They had a photo opportunity and then they had all the tents set up, all the gazebos with all the food trucks. They had loads and loads of places to eat. Lunch started at 12pm but when you first got there, 8 until 11, bacon and sausage sandwiches for vegetarian, so it was a portobello mushroom, had tea, coffee, orange juice, also they had the crepe stand open, so you could get crepe with Nutella, marshmallows, fruits, these were all the other places. So at lunchtime, the barbecue opened. A flash grilled steak apparently was very, very good. We also had uh, fish and chips, hot dogs. There was a pie and mash stand also. That was actually my favorite. Lots of fixings. As many fixings as you could shake a stick at. We had chicken wings here. This one left untasted, but they look good when people were walking around with them. So 
once we have devoured our breakfast, we headed over to the stand and watched a little bit of the racing. The first race of the day and it was very wet. <laughs> Paul, he says that it makes the race a little bit more exciting. Uh, it's such a shame because the day before when we were in London, you will have seen it was absolutely stonkingly hot. So they're taking all the tyres here to the pits. to hear it is very very loud at the racing i had taken earplugs we all had to protect our ears they did have the commentary on loudspeakers and to the right of us there was a large tv to see the cars when you they weren't right in front of you this was where we were sat red rectangle is with the circle <laughs> first race was over we headed back down to the gazebos we got a drink and a little bit of food and there was some live music on and Paul shared a vegetable burger and we also got pie and mash this was one of the best pies I've ever eaten in my life it was beef and cheese that was a hot dog and this was a piece of steak on the sea batter that was from the barbecue apparently that steak was very very good so this is where we sat this was our stand there was a lot of space, uh, there was a seat for everybody. On the second day, on the Sunday, we got our seats in prime position and then somebody was always sat there, so we kept our seats. absolutely lashing it down by this point so we were hurrying to the gazebo everyone was trying to sit inside this poor person up here with the green poncho sat through it all they were adamant they were watching that race so they sat there and kept their seat and got very very wet a lot of us under the gazebos as you can see it was very busy but they had live music and they had a fully stocked bar it was great there were tvs in all of the gazebos so you could keep up to date with the race the girl who was playing the music really good really good wide range of music there was three gazebos and in the morning it would go in one then the early afternoon it would go in another one and then the late afternoon the live music would move to the next gazebo this was everything that was available, complimentary, and then at the bottom, it had all the things that you had to pay for. We stayed in this gazebo till 6 p.m. and then we headed off back for our taxi and cut to the next day. Pressure of all of this, Oliver over again today. A lot busier today, however. We, it was a quite a long walk, a 45 minute walk. We're just about to get our sausage and bacon buddies and some coffee. Uh, the boys are just about to have a turn on the racing simulator. 
racing simulator got quite busy through the day so we decided first thing Sunday morning the boys would have a turn while it was quite quiet. Queued for about 15 minutes for it. This was the screen of Paul's and I think Paul came first and he was very happy about that. This was the main race day. This was by far the busiest day. There was a Calypso band on and we hunkered down in the gazebo until it was time to watch the Red Arrows. seven minute countdown now to the main event. Paul's dad, he got Formula One radio station up on his phone and had his earphones in so he could hear the commentary and Rudimental were playing at the Grand Prix before the race. As you can see one of the cars is has stopped and is smoking they had to send the safety car on after this so the safety car comes on from my understanding from what Paul has told me all the cars have to follow the safety car at a slower pace in the order that they were in the race poor little car all racing for you today once the safety car was off, the back to the race, Max Verstappen was in the lead all the way through the race, widening his gap, and he was the overall winner of the race, which was expected. <laughs> Thank you very much. No worries. 
last drink of the whole weekend. After the race, everyone was having a few drinks again in the gazebo. There was entertainment on this night. I think Tom Grennan was there. However, tickets for this were additional. I know the Black Eyed Peas were there as well on the Saturday night. So we headed back then for the taxi. On the way, we saw this family zone. Like I say, lots of different zones. Me and Paul's mum walking back with our drinks for the taxi. It's a very long walk, you need liquid refreshment. This was one of the other areas, so this was as you came in gate four, that was the stand there. Lots of things on the way back to look at and see, a Challenger 2 tank. One of the Red Arrows planes. Though it did feel like a long walk back at the end of the night, the traffic in this area was chock-a-block. So if you didn't, you would have been sat in traffic for hours. Taxis weren't even allowed anywhere near the grounds. We're outside the White Horse, down in Silverstone itself. And I think this is the best place to get picked up, just with every other road before this has been chock a lock with cars on it. Yeah, it has, yeah. Lewis Hamilton is Paul's favourite. Yeah. How did he do today? He came third, didn't he? He came on the third podium. today, yeah. He got on the podium. Uh, I think given the car that he's got, mm -hmm. it's probably as well as he could have done. Yep. Um, Red Bull at the moment are absolutely storming it with everything. They are going to win the championship. Put it out there now. I'm sure there's a lot of people who don't disagree. The fact that the two British drivers got second and third. It's good. It's a good day. It's good. And you saw good Paul day. earlier on with his Union Jack. So, did you? Yeah, yeah, they, they saw it. They saw it. So we're going to sign off for now, guys. Thanks so much for watching. And we'll see you next time. Thanks so much. Bye. Bye. Hey, guys, we're travelling home now. So we've had such an amazing weekend. We started off travelling down to London, went to go and see Steve Pemberton. Let's highlight went for a indian meal we stayed in a lovely premier inn which i loved i loved going around london i loved seeing all the places that you only see in the monopoly board really good so buckingham palace loving that and like i say a little bit of a date because the boys aren't here i always say it's a date when it's just me and paul because we were dating, aren't we? We headed over to the Formula One, to Silverstone. People were really into racing. I hope you've really enjoyed it. If you're not into racing, I hope you've stuck with it and you're still here. Thank you so much for watching. It's not taking us too long at all. About three hours has it taken us? Three and a half. Three and a half. When we were at Silverstone, I, I never showed you, but we actually got an Airbnb. Now, the Airbnb, was a detached house on like a new housing estate. It was about five miles away. Yeah, five miles. You, you might have to run, you could run it in an hour. <laughs> you could do. You could, yeah. We stayed in an Airbnb. Now this was the weirdest Airbnb and I was talking to my friend about this and she said this has happened to her as well. So we went and what, what they must do is because it, there's a lot of demand, there's 300,000 people go to the racing. They must, for that one weekend, I think the Airbnb it. So they're living in it up until the point that we arrived. They took the rabbit, they had a pet rabbit. They took that, but everything else was as it was. So the fridge was packed with the food. Uh, they had all their uh, toiletries in the shower. They did have fresh towels and hopefully that was fresh bedding. Let, let's hope for that. Uh, everything was nice. I mean, they put things away tidy but it was like living, like staying with a friend. So it's like you've gone to a friend's house and you were staying there. So I mean, we enjoyed it. It was still good, wasn't it? We went to Silverstone with Paul's mum and dad. For the four of us, there, were a bath there was a toilet downstairs and two bathrooms upstairs. So it, it was fine, it was good for us. We enjoyed the Silverstone, we had the hospitality baggage. Uh, as you can see, there were food trucks and drinks galore. So feeling a bit worse for wear now. Glad to be going home though and seeing the boys. I've got a sickly boy uh, apparently at home. So I'm looking forward to seeing them. And of course, 
I'm looking forward to seeing the fat princess. I've missed her greatly. It was funny because we were waiting for a taxi yesterday to come pick us up from the racing and somebody had a basset hound in the front seat of the car. Oh, we were, me and Paul, we couldn't, we were pointing, we were trying to get a good look at her. So it was making us miss our beautiful basset at home. So I hope you've enjoyed it guys and thank you so much for watching and thanks for getting to this point in the vlog and I hope it has been a little bit entertaining and I'll see you next time. Paul's put his little Like and subscribe. Like, oh, 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 oh. that's an order. <laughs> I'll see you later guys, bye bye.